what's going on guys? We have YouTube here, back with another video. And welcome to part 3 of my Bandit series. Today I'm going to be talking about the 7 limited cards. Uh, typically I take cards that are at 1 and up them to 2, rather than take cards that are at 3 and lower them to 2. Simply because it's a habit of mine, I don't think that putting a card at 2 when it was originally at 3 actually damages the consistency of a deck at all. I think generally speaking people will find a way around it, and so I very rarely see the point in doing that. And when Konami do decide to do that, I don't really see the point in it either. So the majority of my cards bar a couple are cards that were originally at 1 and that I have up to 2. So let's get straight into the list. Okay, so first of all we have Book of Moon. Now as we know the format is pretty slow as it is with an opening Torrential Tribute to 2, Call of the Haunted to 3, Mirror Force to 2, and a couple of other things like that. And uh, never mind the fact that a lot of decks are extremely defensive, that we have the likes of Wind of Zemmings and other XYZ monsters like that which take longer to destroy. Um, but there's also more OTKs. And for that reason I think Konami needs to consider cards that were previously limited on the list which would enable a player to prevent the likes of Synchro Summons, XYZ Summons, and things like that. Book of Moon is one such card. I think it's been at one for a long time, about four formats now, or five even. And I think it's about time that it goes to two, for no other reason than the fact that it's a nice stable card that people can tech in in their decks. And now that if they can put it back to two copies, they'll be able to prevent all kinds of crazy swarming. And it will just slow the game down and make it a bit more paced and a bit more fair. And uh, there will be far less OTKs, I believe, if Book of Moon comes back to two. Next of all we have Chaos Sorcerer, and I'm only putting him here because BLS has been banned. There's not really much else to say about him, he's basically an underpowered version of BLS. Uh, level 6, Dark, you know, targeting Chaos Dragon decks. Chaos Dragon decks wouldn't be completely killed off if BLS was banned, but Chaos Sorcerer was put back to 2, so I think that's really the only reason to do that, so there's not really much else to say about him. Okay, so in the past, when you normal summon a God Eater Beast Bestiari and your opponent activated Bottomless Trap Hole, you would get really, really pissed off, because there was only one copy of Bestiari you could use in your decks. However, with the coming of Cosmo Blazer, we have gotten some recent cards that have enabled Gladiator Beasts to become a little bit more competitive, namely the Fire Formation spell and trap cards. So, Fire Formation Tanky allows you to search up a couple of the Beast Warrior type monsters in Gladiator Beast decks, as well as Fire Formation Tensu, which allows you to normal summon an extra monster. And very often, the problem with Gladiator Beasts in the past is that they were unable to uh, get two monsters on the field in order to contact fuse. And of course, Gladiator Beast Bestiary only being up one meant they couldn't go into Geysiris that often. And going into Heraclinus, of course, with an extra normal summon would also be infinitely easier. So that's why I feel if you want to make the deck competitive again, if you want to make them playable, because it was a really enjoyable deck back in the day, we could bring Bestiari back to two. I don't think it would hurt the game all that much. And Bestiari isn't nearly as threatening as it used to be. So that's pretty much the reason. They have a lot of support nowadays. I say we give them more of a helping hand and make them a competitive deck once again. Next of all we have Tsukiyomi, the only reason I'm putting him at 2 is simply because nobody really used him in the last format when he was put back to 1, and people thought he was going to be a lot better than he was, and it turns out that wasn't the case, so why not just put him at 2, it wouldn't really hurt the game all that much. Um, Konami tend to put cards at 2 and at 3 that were originally at 2 or 1, uh, simply because they're being ignored by the players, and this is one of those cases I believe, at least in my local area, I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but certainly in my local area people didn't really use Tsukiyomi all that much. Okay, so next of all we have Tech Genius Striker. This is one of those cards back in the day that could be combined with Hyper Librarian to a ridiculous degree, uh, and you wouldn't even have used your normal summon yet. So basically you would special summon him, you would special summon Tech Genius Warwolf, you would sink into a level 5, either Tech Genius 1 or Magician, who was a tuner herself. Then you would normal summon something, you would sink into something else, blah 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 blah. Uh, the format was kind of crazy back then, that's why Tech Genius Striker was nerfed to the extent that he was. But I think nowadays, that the now that the dust has settled and people have are focusing on other tier 1 decks like Mermails, Windups, Insectors, Chaos Dragons, Agents, etc. Uh, people aren't really paying attention to these types of engines anymore, so I think bringing Tech Genus Striker back to 2 wouldn't really hurt the game all that much. That seems to be the excuse that I always come up with, but it is true. Um, giving these decks a fighting chance in the current meta, trying to make them perhaps tier 1.5 or tier 2 at the very least, uh, would make the game more fun for a lot of players who don't like to fork out large amounts of cash in order to build a deck. So. Tech Genus Striker back at 2, a good idea in my opinion. Okay, so these next two cards I'm going to discuss together. We have Mizuki and Plague Spreader Zombie. In the case of Mizuki, I think it's just zombies versus no zombies. Do we want to revive zombies, give them more special summoning potential, try and make them somewhat competitive in the format? Currently, they have 3 Zombie Masters and 3 Spirit Reapers. Uh, that really doesn't do all that much for them, it just gives them the ability to be annoying for the opponent. Because if they can't get over the Spirit Reapers, then there's really not a lot they can do. However, in the case of Place Spreader Zombie, he's just a level 2 Dark Tuner that was only ever attacking Chaos Dragons. And that's only because he was at one copy and he was a dark target uh, for banishing. He could also be synced with like Pulsar Dragon and so forth. But nowadays I think he has to adapt his role. 
I think if they put him back at 2, they might actually make the zombie archetype on its own a little bit more competitive. I mean, they do have the likes of Zombie Gorillas to make everything into zombies. They have three Book of Lifes. They have all the engines, you know, they have exactly what they need in order to make themselves competitive again. But I think putting both of these cards back at 2 would ensure that they could possibly become Tier 1.5 or Tier 2 once again. And here's something I could make an entire video about, which is Black Whirlwind. I talked about the whole Wind Up Factory at 3 versus Black Whirlwind at 1 argument. And really, the more I think about it, the more sense that it makes. I mean, why isn't Black Whirlwind at 2? And why isn't Factory now at 1? So I think if both of these things happen, people will be, will be very happy indeed. Normal summoning a Blackwing monster isn't all that threatening. Really. You don't get it for special summoning. You don't get it for activating an effect, as in the case of Wind Up Factory. It's not nearly as broken. And putting it at 2 wouldn't hurt the game at all. So why not just put Black Whirlwind back at 2, make Blackwing somewhat playable. Putting Gale at 2, hells no. I'm still not putting Gale at 2. That card is ridiculous. Nevertheless, uh, Black Row in the 2, not the worst idea in the world. Okay guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I was going to make this list longer, as you remember in my last video. I did mention putting the likes of Wind of Magician and Gen X Undine on this list, but I decided that, based on the comments that people put, I actually did hit Wind Ups quite a bit. I put Shark to 1 and I put Factory to 1. In my opinion, actually, that's probably enough. Uh, in the case of Atlanteans and so forth, I put Dragoons at 1 and I put Salvage at 1. And I banned Moving Glacia, so I don't think there was really much more necessary. The deck has been hit and to enough of an extent, I don't think it needs to be hit anymore. Okay guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, be sure to let me know what you thought of these choices. If there are any cards that you feel that I have left out that should be on the list, please let me know. I was going to put Hyper, uh, Hyper Librarian as well as Master Hyperion on the list, but I decided against it simply because they were kind of wild cards that I thought of at the last minute and that it's only really because I hate agents, because they're such a bad matchup for mermails. <laughs> That's pretty much the only reason. But anyway, I will talk to you guys later. I will see you in part four, in which I talk about cards that should come to three.